So when you're flying an airplane, there's a bunch going on all at once. As a pilot, whenever you fly, the people in the airplane are the most important thing to you, since that's your responsibility to get them back to the ground safely. And there are always things that we can't control. I heard of a pilot who got sunscreen in his eyes and couldn't fly. There's you know just things that happen. And knowing that we have another tool in the pilot's toolbox to be able to say, I need help right now and I need to get to the ground safely, that's really exciting. I'm here at Garmin's Hangar at the New Century Airfield in Kansas, where we're gonna test out the company's auto land system. This is the first FAA certified automatic landing system for small aircraft. And I'm hoping that we'll get some great footage of us flying in the sky and also great footage of us landing safely. Runway 36 clear for takeoff. Garmin test one two. Auto landing for planes actually isn't new. It's been employed in commercial aircraft for decades. And in fact, there are parts of Europe where it's absolutely mandatory because weather conditions might make it difficult for pilots to land with their eyes alone. But the existing systems are big and bulky and often require there to be equipment on the ground to help guide the plane to land safely. Auto land as we now know it is designed for the pilot. So the pilot's in charge, he activates the system and the aircraft in certain cases, certain airports, certain capabilities can do a hands-off landing. Garmin Autonomy Autoland empowers the passengers to land an airplane. No one else has enabled a passenger to control the outcome of their flight in the event a pilot can't do that for whatever reason. You probably recognize Garmin by their GPS devices and smartwatches, but it's actually been involved in the aviation industry since its founding in 1989. I had the opportunity to fly in two planes that were owned by Garmin partners and outfitted with the Autoland software. The software successfully landed the plane while I was in it, and that made me curious about the challenges of making a product that can adapt to ever-changing factors like weather and flight patterns to land successfully 100% of the time. My understanding is that the, the auto landing system that we're here to check out is part of a bigger system of autonomous products. Can you talk a little bit about the other autonomous features on the aircraft? Yeah, so we've got uh, obviously the autopilot emergency descent, which if it, it senses that the pilot might be incapacitated or not alert, it'll automatically descend the aircraft to a lower altitude. The uh, system can also automatically engage if that activates and then uh, goes into a level mode and remains in level mode for, for longer than about two minutes on this aircraft, the Autoland will engage and, and lead the pilot and the occupants of the aircraft down to a, a landing. So one of the challenges with putting a system like Autoland into an airplane like this is that it needs to be small and lightweight and it needs to be affordable. So those are three of the main things that we've considered as we were designing this system. We wanted to make sure that the system was something that was repeatable and certifiable. And additionally, we worked uh, with our own aircraft. So we started off up at altitude doing flares at 5,000 feet above a runway, tested up there and made sure that everything was working together in concert and in harmony before we brought it down to the ground where it was a bit more high risk that the airplane would have something happen to it. And, and how many test flights have you done with uh, the, the Autoline system in an actual plane? Uh, hundreds of tests. So. Hundreds? Yeah, we've landed uh, this particular aircraft uh, several hundred times uh, doing that land. Because the technology is so different, it took years for Garmin and its partners to walk through, test, and demonstrate that its system was successful and safe. It's always pilot-centered. We don't ever want to hear the pilot say, what's it doing now? That can never be the case. So the technologies that we'll focus on keep the pilot center of the loop, but we're gonna put safety nets around them and we're gonna do things that can help reduce the workload for the pilot. Because human error is still the number one reason for airplane crashes, and I think probably always will be. And then I've also been asked, where do we think this technology should go? I like to say, if it flies, this technology should be on it. And that means if it's a smaller airplane, it should be there. We need to find a way to get it there. But likewise, I think you should have that expectation. If you get on a commercial airliner, I think you should expect to know that this type of technology is there too. That if for whatever reason, pilots can't do their job, we've got this safety technology that can step up and do this. I have family members that are pilots and uh, knowing that if something was to happen to them, even if they're flying by themselves, the airplane can get to the ground and you know get help for that person. It's really exciting and really humbling to know that we've worked on something like that.